ISIS kills 128 civilians in revenge surprise counterattack on Syrian town. $22 Bitcoin investment brings Norwegian men fortune. Portugal forest fires. Three days of mourning for 62 victims. How do you feel after hearing or reading these headlines? Fear, sadness, boredom, indifference? Did you imagine yourself in that fire? Did you imagine being a refugee, a surprise millionaire? Day by day, we are exposed to endless streams of news, updates, information. Our brains are busier than ever. But how much of it really impacts who we are, how we feel, and what we do? The impersonality of the media can make us feel immune. Online, even with the comment section at our fingertips, the world can feel very one-dimensional. We're looking for ways to understand the world we live in and develop our own story, our own career. So reach out to nonfiction. Unsurprisingly, nonfiction books have been on the rise in the past decade. Nonfiction can offer us something new, more knowledge on a certain subject, a life hack. I also get excited by titles like The Innovator's Dilemma, Start With Why, Increase Your Focus. By the way, how's everybody's four-hour work week going? <laughs> I like to think I'm in control of my life, just like you are. I go for a coffee, go to work, spend time with friends and family. And sometimes I pick up a book. It can be nonfiction or fiction, usually nonfiction, because that at least offers me something straightforward. And in the meantime, I read a lot more. I read my texts, emails, reviews, long reads. In that sense, it's not that we're not reading, it's what we're reading. How many of you have read a book of fiction this year? And I mean a work of lit thanks for the hands. I and I mean a book of literary fiction, not popular fiction. No bondage love story about the cut of gray. <laughs> Literary fiction can usher us on, into other worlds. It can make us step into other realities. But we don't do this passively. We have to do the work. Reading books is thought in action, the joy of a single tasking mind. But there's another important reward that is often left behind. And that's what I want to explore with you today. Former President Obama articulated it seamlessly in an interview. He said, when I think about how I understand my role as a citizen, setting aside being president, and the most important set of understandings that I bring to that position of a citizen, the most important stuff I've learned, I think I've learned from novels. It has to do with empathy. It has to do with being comfortable with the notion that the world is complicated and full of grace, but that there's still truth there to be found. Empathy. That word is bandied about a lot these days. Empathy is the friendly enemy to our feeling of self-importance. Storytelling can help us to not only understand, but feel the complexity, the emotions, the situations of distant others. It can be a vital antidote to the stress of all the noise around us, like meditation. And I will tell you a little bit about how that works. Last summer, I borrowed the new Dave Eggers book from my mom. Heroes of the Frontier. Dave Eggers is one of my favorite writers. I like the cover, so in good spirits, I sat down in my beach chair. The journey began. To my own surprise, I didn't like the first 100 pages. I couldn't rela relate at all to the main character, Josie, a 40-something single mom from Ohio who quits her job as a dentist and takes her kids to Alaska to stay. She didn't even bother to tell her ex-husband she was leaving. But I stuck with it, and towards the end, Josie and her kids are rushing through the forest, desperate to make it back to the civilized world. Rain's pouring. They're all scratched and bloody from running through the branches, but finally, they find an abandoned cabin where they can sleep. And they're so happy they're safe. Now, I'm not a very emo emotional person, but as I was reading this, my eyes began to well up. I got very emotional, and I thought to myself, what made me change from not liking the book to being so invested in it? From indifference to caring to deep emotion. How did this happen? It happened because Eggers artfully triggered my imagination by describing her every emotion. He described the scenery of Alaska as deeply as the scenery of her thoughts. The better I got to know Josie, 
the more I could relate to her feelings and her actions. Just like when you get to know somebody in real life. The more I got into the book, the more my mind started single-tasking. Scientists call this narrative immersion, transcending the here and now. It reduces externally focused attention, thereby increasing deeper reflection. What happens is twofold. While we mirror how we would feel in the situation the main character's in, we also simulate their mental state and imagine being them. So I was imagining how I would feel if I was in Alaska road tripping with two children. But at the same time, I was imagining how it would, how it would feel to be Josie. Empathy, the human form of mind reading. Good writers can create a storyline that takes us by the hand and lets our imagination do the rest, like a fairy tale. As Albert Einstein said, if you want your kids to be intelligent, read them fairy tales. If you want them to be very intelligent, read them more fairy tales. Why? Because the slow pace of reading allows us to pay attention to the language, the metaphors, the complexities. It allows our creative imagination to connect the dots and find the deeper layers in another story. In this time of social networking, self-absorption and individualism, some social scientists say we are experiencing an epidemic of narcissism, an age of entitlement. While sometimes we yearn for a past with close-knit communities where everybody looked out for each other, what we're doing is we're desperately searching for answers to understand the world we live in now. But given the increasing complexity of our world, it's more important than ever that we get out of our own on- and offline echo chambers and do everything to understand the other and spark our imagination. Literature searches and poses questions. It doesn't provide any ready-made answers. Obama mentioned a certain truth that can be found through literature. This truth may be found in a humanness that we're all aching for, to feel deeply connected. Literature has a way of reminding us that the stranger is not so strange. The ambition with which we turn to non-fiction books, we can also foster towards literature. This vintage art form, a life hack avant la lettre, can enrich us and change us from the inside out. Narcissism is the dark side of individualism. Fiction can help us to disconnect from ourselves and tap into an emotional, empathetic side that we don't often take the time to explore. Something to think about this weekend when you're passing by your local bookstore. Thank you.